The MMS mission is a mission consisting of four spacecraft which will fly in close constellation to measure a process called magnetic reconnection. The universe is full of plasma and it's full of magnetic fields and all over the place in the universe you have one plasma colliding with another. An example of that is the solar wind coming in and colliding with Earth's magnetosphere. And then the magnetic energy in the plasma, some fraction of that magnetic energy is converted very rapidly into plasma energy. So you can think of it as, as kind of like a magnetic explosion. And the reason this is important is because uh, these explosions uh, drive a lot of the weather patterns that we see in the magnetosphere. And so what space scientists like to refer to as space weather. Um, and these space weather phenomena can have um, impact um, on our everyday lives. It can actually affect communication satellites, the power grid. So we'd really like to understand how these magnetic explosions work. We need to measure reconnection in more than one location. We need to measure it in basically how it varies in space, how it varies in all three spatial dimensions. And that requires a tetrahedron. The additional fantastic benefit that that provides is that it will actually enable us to recognize that we are looking with a reconnecting region much easier than a single spacecraft. The ideal situation is that we would like the four spacecraft to kind of be surrounding this region where the explosion has happened. So the separation of the spacecraft is about 10 to 100 kilometers, which may seem like a, like a long distance. But in terms of the magnetosphere, which is absolutely huge, this is really a microscopic region that we're trying to cover. MMS has, in a nutshell, two orbital phases which are designed to study reconnection. On the day side, basically you have a situation where the solar wind is just constantly running into Earth's magnetic field. And this is really great for MMS because we know that there, you know, at some point MMS is going, to, is going to encounter this region. And our hope is that since this process is always happening, we're, we're going to get lucky and actually fly right through um, the magnetic explosion as it's happening. Now on the, on the night side, the situation is a little bit different. So what happens is you have a more gradual buildup of magnetic energy in the tail, and these reconnection processes, these magnetic explosions, can just sort of pop off randomly. We don't really know when it's going to happen or where it's going to happen in the tail. We need to understand both of those if we want to understand how the magnetosphere works. And we believe that both of those scenarios are also very important for other applications, such as on the sun, in the solar wind, uh, in planetary magnetospheres, and in many astrophysical objects, as well as in the laboratory. We hope that it's going to allow us to improve our models so that we can put the right physics in it and actually make predictions about where and when reconnection is going to happen. And this will help us make our space weather models more predictively powerful. The instruments that are actually going to be measuring the particles in space are collecting them much more rapidly at a much higher cadence than, than they have on previous missions about a factor of 100. So whereas it would take uh, you know, a previous generation particle instrument um, about three or four seconds to build up a whole picture of the sky, um, it's going to take MMS about 30 milliseconds. So it's, it really is sort of game-changing technology.